What are 3D objects and how are they made? Hi there, welcome to SelfCAD. If you're watching this video, you may find yourself in one of these situations. You are completely new to 3D modeling. You have graphic design experience, but you're new to 3D modeling. Or you've just started learning 3D modeling, but you don't understand how it works yet. If any of those sounds like you, then you're in the right place. In this video, we'll cover three things. First is, what makes an object 3D? Secondly, we'll discuss some key 3D modeling terms that you need to know. Area, volume, and 3D surfaces. To further illustrate what makes an object 3D, we'll also discuss some graphic design terms, like pixel and point cloud. Lastly, we will introduce the concept of area and volume, and how they are used in design software. Let's begin. We live in a 3D world, which means you can reference the coordinate position of any object relative to your environment. For example, a GPS gives you 3D coordinates relative to the entire world, but you can also use a local coordinate system to indicate the position of something relative to a room, for example. However, the fact that you can use a 3D coordinate system to reference an object's position does not make that object 3D. <laughs> so what makes an object 3D? A three-dimensional shape is defined as a solid object that has three dimensions, length, width, and height. Unlike two-dimensional shapes, three-dimensional shapes have thickness or depth. So for example, we have a square. If you add thickness and depth to it, it becomes a cube. Now let's take it a step further. Since you'll be working with CAD software, you need to understand the distinction between physical and digital 3D objects. So how does digital design differ from physical 3D objects? All physical objects that we can see and touch are by definition three-dimensional because they must have some thickness or else you would not be able to see and touch them. But that's not the case with digital objects. Digital objects that we see on screen are unique because they do not have any thickness, hence it cannot exist in the real world. However, that does not mean you can't measure them in 3D because measurement is relative to the environment rather than the object itself. Let's illustrate that with a line. If you draw a line and measure it relative to a 2D plane, you will only get two axes as notated by an XY coordinate system. However, once you introduce a 3D workspace, you can now measure the same line relative to three axes as notated by an XYZ coordinate system. How are non-digital 3D objects created? The fact is that any big object is made of smaller pieces. That is true for physical objects and for digital objects alike. However, the relationship between the smaller parts and how they connect to each other makes a big difference as that defines the type of object, how it's made, and how it behaves. Typical images, also known as raster images, are nothing more than a set of pixels put together in one compressed file that we call an image. They have no relationship to each other Hence, you need to fill in each pixel, or else it will leave empty gaps, and similarly, editing a single pixel or set of pixels will have no impact on the remaining pixels. How are digital 3D objects made? Digital 3D objects are made by combining a set of polygons to create a bigger shape called a mesh. Much like you can add a relationship between two points by extending them into a line, you can add a relationship between connecting polygons, which are also called faces, to make a 3D mesh in the same way. When you connect faces without creating a closed shape, you will have a surface, and when you do close them, you will get a solid. A closed 3D solid is also called a watertight mesh. A watertight mesh can be a 2D object with added thickness or a hollow 3D shape, as long as it has thickness. This also means that every watertight mesh must have a volume. 
Hence, 3D surfaces are not considered watertight. What about closed shapes? Closed shapes such as a rectangle, circle, or any custom drawing stays 2D as long as they do not have thickness. Since you can always measure the entire area relative to a 2D environment. However, once you add thickness, the object itself becomes 3D because you need three dimensions in order to measure the entire volume regardless of its display environment. Now, let's go over important terms that you need to understand when learning how to see, think, and design in 3D. Area versus volume. Area is the amount of space occupied by a two-dimensional flat object, while volume is defined as the space occupied by a three-dimensional object. Physical objects always have a volume, hence they are automatically 3D. But digital objects can have an area without a thickness, making them just 2D. Or you can add thickness and then they gain volume and become 3D. 3D surfaces. We've established that 3D objects require depth and thickness, but there's a special case for 3D surfaces. Curved surfaces are rather unique because you need a 3D environment to display them. And you need three axes to notate its coordinate positions, but they do not occupy any 3D space as they have no volume. This means that 3D objects can exist without having any thickness or depth, but they are not considered a solid geometry. In order to become solid geometry, you need to add thickness so that it gains volume. Pixels versus point cloud. Pixels are 2D objects, but there's a similar concept in 3D, which is called a point cloud. A point cloud is like a set of cylinder balls placed in a single box without any relationship to each other. You can still move all cylinders at once in the same way that you can move a box of balls. And when it comes to digital objects, you are not limited to moving them around. You can also scale as well as perform many other transformations because you work on the entire box as a whole. Still, the fact that there's no relationship between each small part means you have to fill in each part individually, and editing some will have no impact on others, as with the case with pixels. Now that we've covered some key terms, let's discuss the relationship of vector graphics and 3D CAD software. If you have some background knowledge in graphic design, this might be exciting to you. As well, if you don't, it's still something that we encourage all 3D learners to understand. Vector graphics and 3D CAD software. When it comes to vector graphics, you're still working with smaller parts, but you have the ability to add relationships between those parts. For example, a line is made of just two points, and the relationship creates the connecting line between them. This means that the same two points can be used regardless of the size of the line, which is why vector graphics are great for scaling, because you do not need to fill in each pixel, hence they do not pixelate when scaling. Vector graphics become even more powerful when connecting lines to create a shape. Once you have a shape, you can fill in the entire area without adding any additional pixels or points. A closed 2D shape is called a polygon. You need a minimum of three lines, also called edges, in order to close a polygon, but you have no maximum. You can create very complex shapes that will automatically fill inside as long as they remain closed. 3D CAD is similar to 2D vector graphics. They just extend the same concept into a three-dimensional environment and they allow creating three-dimensional objects and 3D solids that can automatically fill all closed shapes. Now, let's go over what it means to work with the concepts we just learned. First, we'll go through working with an area. Next is working with volume. And lastly, working with object details. These concepts are important in understanding how digital 3D objects behave in a CAD workspace, like self-CAD, working with an area. The concept of area plays an important role in vector graphic design software. You can overlap multiple areas and create new shapes based on the combination, subtraction, or intersection of these objects. 
These are known as Boolean operations. 2D Boolean operations are well known and used in 2D design software, such as Adobe Illustrator. But you can also do the same in SelfCAD's freehand drawing tools, working with a volume. Boolean operations play an even bigger role in 3D modeling software. While many other CAD softwares have Boolean tools, CellCAD has developed our own stitch and scoop tools that allow you to join, subtract, and intersect multiple objects. Boolean-based modeling is a powerful tool and is widely used in many different industries. However, they have some limitations, since all the objects need to be watertight also known as manifold. They can also be time-consuming when making organic and complex shapes. Some software, such as Tinkercad, relies solely on Boolean-based modeling, and they only have union and subtraction options, which is why it can get complicated to accomplish even simple things, such as making beveled edges, for example. Selfcad's Stitch and Scoop, on the other hand, also has an intersection option which is a powerful method for creating parametric designs and for creating wrapped text on objects, among other possibilities. Working with the object details. When it comes to making more complex designs, you would rather want to work directly with the components that make up the object. This type of modeling is called polygon-based modeling, and this is what makes SelfCAD so special. SelfCAD has an incredibly user-friendly interface. It's relatively easy to learn and super easy to use when compared to any other polygon modeling application. SelfCAD enables you to deform the object components with ease and has the ability to edit the actual structure of an object, also known as the object's topology structure. In conclusion, we hope this video gives you a better understanding about digital 3D objects. As a next step, please watch the video titled How to Position 3D Objects to learn more about how to navigate CAD software. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more 3D modeling content.